Welcome to part two of the GSXR 50 valve shim, valve clearances, adjustment, blah, blah, blah. Um, right, okay. We've got our valve shims, I've ordered our valve shims, the ones we need, they've arrived, so they're not up there. They, we've got a 165 and we've got a 150. Um, some of these valve shims need to be 165 and some of them need to be 150, but uh, I did mention before, uh, I think I mentioned before in part one, that I usually sand them down to make them all even. So I want all my valve clearances to be 100% even. I don't want mixed and matched uh, sizes. I don't like things to be in spec. I like it to be proper, all even now. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is uh, organize the valve shims, take out the ones that are gonna remain in the correct, um, the correct order, and we're gonna sand the remaining valve shims to get them to the right clearance. So let's take a look. Okay, so this one is our 171. We've got that correct. We're going to place him there, leave him out of the way. Um, we want to organize these now. So 165, that one, let me get a pointer. Let me zoom in also. I'm not on form today, am I? Okay, so. 165, so we need a 165. These are hot cams valve shims, they're stuck to, bloody stuck together as well. You can barely see the writing on them, but I don't know if I'll focus on it, but it is on there. Well, oh, you can see that, 165. So that's a 165, we've got that one. And place him there. What else we need? Another 165, awesome. And place him there like that. And we want 163, oh. Damn, have I wrote 165 there? Oh, 165 is another one, yeah. That's great, saving me work. 163, 165. I need to tick these off. Let me get a pen or a pencil. So I'll tick, I'll put a cross in there. I've got that one. I've got that one. I've got that one. Let me see, that's a 165 or so. And that one, 165. Rolling all over the desk. Not a good start. Not a good start, Paul. I've got that one. 163, 163. So these remaining ones, I'm going to take the 165s. These remaining ones here, which are 163, 163, 163. I'm going to sand this down. It's 165s, so we're going to take uh, 0.2 off of that. And that should give us our clearance. So, um, 160, 160, 150, where's the 151? Oh, it's 140, I'm looking at the wrong size there. So, 150, 150, so three, four of those. So that's a 150, 150. Got them, got them. Go on another one, got that also there. And we've got another 150 there. There we go, 150, that's about it. So the, the, the remaining 148s, I'm going to take 0.2 of those, and that should give us our correct clearance. Right then, let's get sanded. Right then, so we're going to put our 170, it's 171. Grab it. 171 shim. In there, just like that. I'm gonna reseat our bucket. This magnet's bloody strong. Crikey. The next one. That was our one six five, was it? All right, 165, 165. Here's a quick tip as well. If you put your valve shim in and it goes in at an angle and you, and you can't get it out, because they do get stubborn sometimes when you put these in, uh, all you simply do, take a, take a socket, place it over like that, press down it, and just give it a tap with a hammer and take, it, and take your uh, socket away. And it should be level. It'll just shock the valve down a little bit just to get that level okay. So just do that slight tap with a hammer and it should drop it into place, all right? So we'll reseat our 
Look it on there. It's bloody. <laughs> this this magnet is so strong. It won't let go of that. Need that off anyway, but. Let go. Damn you. One six three on there, one six three. So we're gonna turn this one six five into a one six three. I'm simply I'm going to sand away the writing. Like I said, it doesn't confuse the next people. Circle Circular motion. Make sure you have a cup of tea to hand as well. Can take a while this. So I'm using 800 grit for this one. If you use a sandpaper that's too coarse, it might not take as much off as you think. So you're going to end up with it chattering on the surface when you try to sand it. So you may not take off as much as you desire. But it's easier just to take 0 0.1, 0 0.2 off as opposed to taking. 10 off you know so 200 microns it's a lot less to go by the worst thing is when you when you do this for quite some time and you go to measure your uh, valve shim and you took bugger all off it so all right so what we got Oh, it's not bad actually. Let me get this a better view for you. There we go, you can see that now. Okay, so one thing I didn't mention in the last video, when you're tightening these, the thimble up, use this, this crank at the back here, don't use this. I mean, I'm experienced, so I can cheat a little bit. But reason being, you might over tighten it. You get a more accurate reading if you use this cam. So that is on 164 already. So I've done very little to wear that down on the 800 grit. And that's brilliant, unless this weren't right in the first place. I'll measure the other ones to make sure they are accurate, okay? But uh, that is good, that. So I've only got one more to go. You don't want to overpressure it because there's, a, there's parts and components in here. You can compress them and damage them. So... To get a true reading on the micrometer, use this. And that'll give you a true reading, alright? Check it on the vernier. There you go. 164, that's bang on that. So it's pretty accurate. 164. Again, referring to the other video we've got. This goes up in 2, 4, 6, 8, so oh, there you go. 164, so we'll give that a little bit more sanding. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's just dropped under. So I'm happy with that. That one's done. We'll stick that in the bike. So that one needs to go. 163 there. So we'll tick that one off. And that's our first one. So that's in the bike. We've got the last remaining two now. 163. So we'll take two valve shims. Get these two sanded down. And we'll measure them. And get those in also. Right. Right. That's all those done. So... Now, I've fitted those to the bike and now we're doing the exhaust valve. So we've got 1484, 148. So, okay, so this is the ones we're going to be doing now. I've got four 150s or 0 0.150. I've got four of those and they're all going to get sanded. I'm just going to give them a quick measure first to see how accurate these hot cans are. Ooh. 
that appears to be hundredth out. Oh dear. So that is point one out on them. So I'm using two pieces of equipment here, and I doubt they will all lie, so that's supposed to be a one fifty. That's so that one is. That's just over. There's no crap on this. Let's check the micrometer for zero. So the micrometer is zeroed. And these are out. So that one is out. I mean, the other one was just under so. That is a whoops, where we lost our focus. That is a lesson there. Now, these are I said I don't like slagging companies off, but this is these are hot cams valve shims, they are not accurate. They're all 100, 100 microns out, these. Why are we not focusing? So that's there, look, just under. Yeah. And that's just under there as well. You see that? So both these measuring instruments are correct, but these valve shims are not so that's one uh, reason why you shouldn't just go with the numbers that are printed on them check them all first uh, the other the, obviously the 165s were okay uh, but these 150s are not at all right so not to worry we're gonna we're gonna sand these down anyway to 148 so we've got a little bit more to sand off uh, so i need 300 microns off them i believe so let's get this sanded Right then, we're in. We've got all these. Oh, I'm tripping up here. We've got all these down to one four eight now. I'll show you. See how. Can't get him in properly. I'm dropping him. You see that? One four eight. I don't know why it's not zooming very well today. I'll try and go slow with it. Oh, there we go. One four eight. Look at that. How accurate that is. Aren't I very clever? Excellent. Right, 148, so all these four shims check out. I need not to drop them. And they're going to go in. One, two, three, four. Exhaust. Okay, let's get those in. 
Oh, I can't bother putting this together now. I might just sell it as it is. Some freaking magnet from hell. Also, just make sure there's no debris on all these when you put them in because it will throw your your clearances out. So make sure they're clean. These can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. You've got to get them bang on straight, otherwise they just don't want to go in these buckets. Awesome. Right. Right, now it's the, the cam, the assembly part, so. Right, okay, so it's operation fit the cams time. Um, it's a real pain in the ass on the GSX file on this one, but it's achievable to fit the cams. Uh, right, I'm gonna show you a few tips that I highly advise. So as you may know, as we discussed earlier on part one, that you can't see the cam, the cam markings very well, clearly because of uh, the frame that's in the way. You can't look at them direct from here. You have to peer from under here or, or the top. Uh, you can remove this, but you won't achieve much, so I'm not gonna bother. I'll leave it where it is. So what I'm gonna do, here are your cam tire marks. You can see where I popped those little red marks on there. Now you, you don't need to mark ever, ever, when you're doing timing, you don't ever need to really mark the timing chains up. I've only done this to illustrate to illustrate to you what I'm pointing to. That's all just so it helps you understand. Um, I, however, I'm going to put marks on everywhere. You see these time marks? Number one, two, three, there are the arrows. I'm going to mark up where they are because you just can't see them from this angle when you're um, timing this up. And, and I need, this is crucial we get this right. Um, so I've got my red paint there, my little dippy brush thing. I'm going to mark up, identify the positions of all these, just like I've done there. Um, so I would wipe this down, degrease it. That way, when this is in the bike, you can look from here or from underneath, and you can see where those red marks are in relation to the cylinder, to the um, cylinder head top. But you don't have to. Sorry, I'm swinging the camera around like a crazy fool. You don't have to mark up timing chains. I know some people get crazy and end up mark when they're doing timing belts on cars, this and other. Um, here's a timing belt from the Mitsubishi. I've done a timing belt on that. I've done timing kits and belts on all sorts of engines. I've never ever once marked things up with Tipex or paint and then transferred it to the new timing belts or chains. That is an absolute no-no. You don't need to do it. You've got to think about it this way when you're doing timing. When the, when the engine is manufactured and they put brand new belts and things on it, they've got nothing to, to mark up, have they? They've got timing marks which are machined on all the components, okay? You've got timing marks on your crank, on cars you have oil pump and you have your balancer shaft, stuff like that. So you don't need to mark things up to transfer the new um, parts over. If you get a stretched timing belt and you mark up uh, the old belt, then remove it, place a new one over the top, and you start transferring those marks to fit things on, then you're basically marking something which is possibly not timed up correctly, and you're fitting the new belt not timed up correctly. So you want to go with all the timing marks always. So um, anyway, contradicting myself, I'm going to put marks on here on these cams so I can identify them better when they're in the uh, engine there, okay? That's what I'm gonna be doing. So, paint it out, let's do a little bit of marking up. Right, there we have it. I have engulfed both these cams in paint so I can see where those marks are when I come to install them. Um, they don't have to be any specific width, it's just so I can identify where these timing stamp marks are. All right, that's all. So let's get them in. Let the awkwardness begin. 
So if you drop the cam chain down there, don't panic. You can just simply get a coat hanger or something like that and pull it out, fish it out. So we need to work from, um, let me just lay that down. We need to work from this side and pull the chain over and back again, okay? I want to maintain that my timing mark is correct down there. So I've got my hand under here. Get pulled up as much of that chain as you possibly can. Sometimes the chain will gather up at the bottom. It'll feel like it's uh, not long as it should be. So just give it a, just drop it down, give it a little bit of a turn there. That feels relatively okay. So now this. I called it a notch, but I'll call it a slot. That slot wants to be pointing towards the tank, okay? So the, there's a, a marking of one arrow there. See? One arrow there. That wants to be level. It's be pointing towards the radiator. We are forgetting our little dowels that go in there, aren't we? I'm first going to drop it in into position. And we'll fit our chain on. Right on the other cam, that notch or slot, which we'll call it, points up. And you want the number, where are we there? the number one facing down, and the two pointing to the radiator. That's for this one. This is equal, equally as awkward. I'm just checking that that's seated into those bearing retainers. Now, <clears throat> this will this will lift up. It won't sit down um, flush because you've got other cams in different positions in there. So it will it will only sit down flat once you get the cam tops on. That end. So this cam at the back is off. I need to drop that down. what I'm doing, you can see my hand down there, I'm pushing my finger into the cam chain slot, which to just assimilate, uh, sorry, the cam chain slot, I'm pushing my finger into the um, tensioner, cam chain tensioner slot, just to put some tension on this, just to see if those cams line up. Which is some a subject there we're gonna go into in a minute. Top one looks okay. Yeah, that looks good. I've actually done that quicker than the last one. That's in line, that's in line. That looks fantastic. All right. So next thing I'm gonna do is just count how many pins from one to the other. Right, so what I do with this to get these cams lined up is all, it's a bit hard to record, but 
You can set a torch on there, you can see these timing marks from the inside. Uh, it's better for the exhaust cam. I should have took the tank off really, I really should. If it, for the exhaust cam, you can got my little my fingers down here look. You can, if you manipulate it around from this end, what you can do is you can pull the chain apart, lift the chain up, and that way you can just twist it round here to get it lined up. Um, you want to get that idea that you want to pull a pull a chain up, so put tension on it from on downwards and, and pull it up and wrap it round the cam from this side. Um, so if you do that and get this level, this cam level, lay it down, and then get your exhaust cam in and do the same with that. So if you if you grip it here at the back, you can squeeze in there. Just lift the chain up. And pinch it making sure it's where it needs to be so let me count these pins again right okay so we have 15 pins so where that two arrow which is freaking difficult to see comes up there it points to that pin and you want to count one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so the three arrow will point to the 15th pin. This side is a little harder to line up than that one. Um, you do have your timing marks on the reverse, say, you can just barely see that. They're not really. Uh, in line of so these are quite the this this mark here the two is slightly offset so um they don't really line up perfectly with the top of this uh, cylinder head so but however the exhaust cam does and it should be level with the head okay you can count back those 15 pins even if you want to put, put some paint on them anything that makes it easier okay mark up those 15 pins you can't really go wrong then so you stick that in it should be in line right so keep a check on this down here, make sure that stays where it is. I'll leave a ratchet on it, because it'll want to pop one way or the other, so I'll leave the ratchet on it, it gives it a little bit of resistance, but make sure that stays exactly where it is um, be before you tighten those cam tops down, okay? Now, other thing, your cams are gonna sit up. They won't drop down level, because, like I said, these two valve buckets are, uh, the, all the valve buckets are up, up at the moment, in the upper position, it's all cl all closed, and these cams will want to press down on those valve buckets. So when you put your cam top on, that will compress the whole thing. So you want to get this as accurate as possible. You may get it wrong. You may have to come back to it, but don't worry about it. Make sure it's all checked out fine. And then you're back in business. So I'm going to put my finger in this timing chain hole in there. I'm going to press against the timing chain guide and can see that tighten up. It's not going to tighten up a great deal, but you can see where it will push those cams around and align them, okay? All right, check that there's no crap underneath that. And we'll get it pushed in there. Usually, uh, what I do is I bolt the cams down before I fit the chain. I test my valve clearances, but without being cocky, I'm that confident I've got this nailed. So it should be all right. Yeah, usually I do that. I check that the cams are all the cam the valve clearances are all in spec before I go ahead and put the fit the chain and everything like that. Okay, so now I've got all these finger tight. I'll just um, nip them up a little bit. I've got a 10 mil spanner here. You can do this on the bench if you want, but I've, I've done it here so it's a bit easier. Um, I've loosened off this oil feed, so it just gives this a little bit more freedom. 
I'm going to remove the bolt from the rear one. You don't want to bend anything. That keeps that out of the way. Right, so. So that bolt removed is now in a safe place. This one's slack also, I'm going to leave that one in. It's just so it's got extra movement. So I need to keep constant pressure on this cam chain uh, because when you tighten these down, obviously the valves are all closed so the, the compression of the side, the resistance from those springs will want to make these cams jump. If there's no pressure on this chain, then you're going to jump teeth and you have to take the whole thing apart again. It's really crappy, is this. Most bikes just bolt together, but not the Suzuki GSX-R engine. It's a lot easier. I mean, if you had this out of a, on the bench, this engine, it would be a hell of a lot easier. Hell of a lot easier. It's not really maintenance friendly. I'm doing this while it's in the bike. <laughs> Right, I've not been able to uh, show you whilst recording because it's quite a difficult procedure is putting this on. Now, um, you've got these numbers on top of these, these cam tops, okay? You've got one, two, uh, three, four. Then you got it goes back to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and the same on the opposite side, all right? So you need these to go down level. Best advice is to get your cam chain tensioner, which is full extent, get these all uh, level, all timed up. Okay, and you want to put pressure on this cam chain. So insert your cam chain tensioner, and I use one hand, just to hold pressure on it, and then seat these on on top. Keep that pressure down, just until you get all this start to tighten all these screws up. But what you need to do is you need to keep pressure on there. You need to start tighten these these bolts up, okay? But I would start. I would ignore these numbers. Ignore them. They're mostly for when you're talking it down. Or all right, but you need to get this down level. Don't start from one end and work your way back like that. Your cams will it'll put pressure on your on your cams and they'll jump a tooth on the on the on the chain. All right. So what I do is I tighten the back ones down slowly. I get this all level first of all. I start winding the back ones in from there, there, there to there on both of these. Get this so it's level, balanced. That Then you want to start driving it down. Okay, go from the, I, I do, I kind of do these ones last. Start from the end on both of them like that and drive it down level. Try and keep your eye on this area here. Where as it's closing up on both of them and get it to go down evenly like this, okay? Until it starts to seat on the bottom there. You can let go of the cam chain tension. Your hand starts getting tired, something like that. You can let go when it, once it, when it starts heading towards the bottom there. Um, after that, when these are all reasonably down, not tight, you can then start to do your torque sequence, okay? Starting one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. They're opposite on this one, so 11, 12 there. That's what. That's what, how you do it, okay? You need to talk these down in that sequence because uh, you can't just go around all this talking each, each individual one up of your own choice because um, as you as you know, if you when you've got pinch bolts like this, when you tighten one down, another one will become slack. So if you go around in a sequence, as it should be, talking these up, then you shouldn't have any dramas, all right? That's what you do with it all. So go around with it. 10 Newton meters, these are, or seven foot pounds, all right? So go around with them with the numbers. Make sure they're all talked up in the sequence. But first of all, remember, keep pressure on this cam chain always. And check down here. Make sure you top the centre, keep having a look so it's not slipped and 
you should you should get that together okay all right it's just a bit difficult for me to uh, record it when i'm up and down here in the way and what have you but anyway that's a good tip all right right it is crunch time so i'm going to do the exhaust valve first now i've not got a 30 well i can't find one so all i'm doing is doubling up a 10 and a 15 barely see it 10 and 15 i'm going to double that up i'm going to check well that's see. i'm going to check these ones so perfect that feels beautiful okay one thing about valve clearance checking what should it feel like when you insert a feeler gauge into the cams well uh to get a good reading when you know things are spot on it should feel like closing a book onto the feeler gauge and pulling them out without putting a great deal of pressure on or sometimes no pressure at all so if you close the a book down onto these if you the center of a book maybe onto these and pull them out that's what it should feel like that that means you've got a good clearance reading okay um if you're from the 80s and early 90s or beyond that telephone book is a good way to get a good feel for this okay a telephone book all right you close that down again again on these pull them out that's what it should feel like. Then you know you've got a, a perfect reading. All right, good. Spot on that. Right, next one. 20. Spot on. Spot on. Excellent. Excellent. So all those are absolutely bang on. Okay. Okay, so it's time to fit the cam chain tensioner. All right. And in the last video, I did point out that there is a cam chain tensioner locking tool um, you can purchase. And I think I've just put a description on there well, with a picture so you can find it on, on eBay or something like that. But uh, if not, you can make one yourself. I've used a simple hacksaw blade. Okay. Hacksaw blade is probably better than the tool you can get online and I've made one myself this simple little locking tool and so I'm going to show you how I made it so you can make one for yourself all you need is a bench grinder and a hacksaw blade all right let's take a look okay please excuse the mess in here one thing about grinding discipline this this uh bed here should be as close as you possibly can to that wheel so so that way you don't trap anything down inside it. Uh, I'm just quite dangerous, so make sure this is close up to there. I will tighten this up later on. Uh, right, anyway, I've, I've just had this pulled out because I've been grinding tungstens on the apple of TIG welder, so it gets me a good angle where it's away like that. Anyway, um, another thing you shouldn't do when you are grinding, as I say, is use a side of the wheel. But I've used a side of the wheel just to take down this thin piece of metal. So what I've done... I first of all ground down the hole just by doing merely doing this ground down the hole past it and I've used the side of the wheel just to take this down to put a blade on there like a screwdriver tip on it side of the wheel then I use the side of the wheel just to do this part as I call it and I'm going to show you how it works all right, let's 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 have a look at this then. Okay, so the reason why I've, I've made a tip like this, this part here is to act as a screwdriver tip, and this part here is what locks the uh, the cam inside here from moving. So if you, I'll just show you how it fits inside. It fits in just like that, look. There's a screw, a flat screwdriver head in there, and that slots in like that and locks it. But where we need to lock it, If you know how to do these, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply pressure this way, first of all. Apply a constant pressure, and you're going to wind this all the way in. Because when it fires out of there, it wants to go with some force. Now, when this is wound in, this screw will align, should align with one of these tips here. So that gets pushed in there, it's like that. And it's locked it. Brilliant. So when you um, fit your cam chain tension, you can tighten this all the way up. All I have to do then is just pull this out. Okay, and your tensioner is in there. And that's it. Hacks or blade. A quick hack. Okay, so there's not an easy way to record this, so this is the best angle I can do for you. 
So we're going to get this tensioner in there. Let's take a look. So it doesn't really matter which way you put this tensioner in, it'll always face vertical. This tip here, alright? What we're going to do, we don't want that locking thing to jump out. If it does, you reset it again. Where's my bolts? Damn bolts are in it, aren't they? Right, fiddly job now. You know, I've not got any T handles. I'm going to invest in some T handles. Um, I'm using a long Allen key to finish cranking this together. Right, those bolts are tightened up in there now, so all we're going to do is have a quick check that my timing's all there. I'm going to look down here, make sure that's right. One last look, all my red marks, I can see them. I understand you can't see them. I can see all my red marks are level. Okay. Where they need to be, you won't see that one down there, obviously. It's just right behind there. But all my red marks are level. So we're good to go. All my slots or notches, whichever you want to call them, are where they need to be. So all I'm gonna do now is pull that out. And that should have tensioned the chain. Alright. Next thing I'm gonna do now is just crank this round slowly. Right, so I'll put some pencils in here just so I can see which cylinders are up and which ones are down. Uh, which cylinders, pistons, sorry. So we've got cylinder uh, one and four pistons up top of the centre. We're going to check these valve clearances. Usually, I, I would advise anybody um, most of the time just to check your valve clearances before you rebuild your cams. Uh, that way, if, if they're wrong, incorrectly, you can go back and do some more readjustments. But I am quite confident, I've done this many times, I'm quite confident I've got this right. So, okay. Beautiful, that's that. That's them all 20. And again, I've doubled these up, so we've got 30. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. We're good. Right, so another way of checking your valve clearance, I'm just going to show you on the engines. All right, let me just tripod, stick this tripod down. All right, so <clears throat> here you have, I'll draw you a cam. My best illustration of a cam I can. All right. So, we have a cam here, okay, so I know that it's a little bit wonky that, but please bear with me. So, we've got our feeler gauge, if you think about uh, under here, you, you've got your cam bucket here, okay, so as that rotates round, it pushes the bucket down, the, pushes the valve down, okay, this makes contact and pushes the valve down to its uh, lowest point, and the rate, as it goes back round, it will raise back up and that valve will close all right um so if you want to check those valve clearances another way of doing it is make sure that cam is pointing <clears throat> that's the line here it's pointing away from the bucket all right so this area here 
this circumference, let's say the valve bucket itself is there, and your valves in here. Okay, you can check long as long as you are within this region here on your on your cam, you can check that clearance because this should not touch the valve bucket. This shouldn't touch only when it starts to come around here to this area that touches it. Okay, so you're not going to get a reading from that. But here you should be able to put your feeler gauge in. So if you, um, you you can really sometimes rotate your cams round. You don't have to get top dead center all the time with them, although it is advisable. Um, you can rotate your cams around, take a look at them. As soon as they're pointing out past this area here, get your feeler gauge in. Okay, rotate, rotate them around, whichever ones you're checking. So you don't have to take your eyes off it and get your feeler gauge in there. All right. So it doesn't need to be upright, totally at the top. This could be around here, but like I said, as long as this area, if you'll take a look at it, is not touching your valve bucket, if it's past here, then uh, you can check it and you should be able to get a reading off that, right? I've got to fit this cam chain guide now. Don't forget to put your cam chain guide on. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've got one hand holding this. I'm going to put that side on first. There's less of a risk. I mean, dropping it. The bolt, should I say. <sighs> and we're in. Okay, I'm going to put the other bolt in there and tighten it up. Then we'll get the rocker cover on, all right? It's a bit tight, it's a bit fiddly. What you will get there. This can be a bit of a pain to get on at first, so give it a bash. Feel around it. Now we on. And we got it. I dropped two of my little washers as well. Put those back on there. Another important thing is don't over tighten these because you can quite easily strip those threads in here. To be honest with you, um, I'm even reluctant to torque these up. I've come across mostly on dirt bikes, but I have had bikes in the past where uh, I've, I've torqued these up and the threads have gone in them. It's probably due to other people over tightening them in the past, but I just do a a little self-experienced torque setting on them, so a quarter turn, something like that. But <clears throat> yeah, they do. They should bottom out. Please ignore my clumsiness. They should bottom out on here. Right before I put these in as well, make sure you're getting the right, the right way around. Otherwise, you are buggered again. So, where's my long? So remember this uh, screwdriver goes in there like that to tighten these up so you want the uh, screw thread to the inside. What I'm going to do first is just put a little bit of maintenance spray on these. I use dirt shifter chain lube, brilliant stuff, it stays on your threads for a while. Um, obviously maintenance spray, it will, it will wear off after a while, but I'm just going to put a slight bit of this dirt shifter on my threads there, and that should help keep those protected. Chain lube is probably better than most greases because it's more durable and it'll stay on that surface. Looks like that wants to spread out a little bit, there we go. Oh, let me on then. It should be home. Yeah, Whew, we're in. Right, let me get you a closer look here. I'm going to tighten these up in a minute. So, if you take a look at the position, 
where I've got my cables at the moment here. I've screwed them on. You want uh, to tension the return, okay? And leave the uh, throttle opening cable slack on there, all right? Um, this is the, which you must know, this is the cold start, which sets the throttle back a little bit, opens those for it to fire up. Yep, it's only a tiny bit it moved. Got that in there. Let's give it a quick tester. So it's only a slight movement. Is that? That's how sensitive your throttle bodies are. There's plenty of slack in there, so it's not affecting anything. All right, so we're going to tighten these up now. Damn GoPro, it's just shut yourself off. I fired the bike up, I ought to show you it fire up from a fresh rebuild, but the bloody GoPro's uh, stopped recording and knocked itself off, but we're all right now. Right. That's all folks, that's all for this video and it's all for this S-Rad. So this S-Rad is completed, it's all together now, it's running and hopefully, when, like I said, we get some dry days, I might take it out for a quick spin. Well, I have to take it for a quick spin, but rude not to hunt it. And I'll get my GoPros on there and do a little video on it. Um, I do like S-Rads, I love S-Rads and I want to buy more. I want to do some custom painted S-Rads, I think, one of my next ones. Uh, I hope this video anyway has, has helped you to do your own valve clearances. This, all this, these practices that I've shown you on this video will apply to any bike um, if you're doing valve clearances. It's just the engine setups are different with your V-twins, your triples and your uh, inline falls, but they're all, they all work in the same way. So if you've got any burning questions, put a comment in the comments box below, I'll get back to you as soon as possible as you can. Or you can look me up on Instagram, Product X channel Instagram, I usually get back to people quicker there you can send me a message if you've got any questions burning questions or problems with your bike something like that and i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can i do like to hear about people's success stories throughout the videos that i've done especially with the vtr and the r1 stuff like that i've had a lot of people send me messages saying what a brilliant job brilliant videos and they've had some success with their bikes they've not been running for a long long time they run better so i do like to hear that i like it it, it, it drives me to do more so if you've done the valve clearances on your s rad and you've watched my videos it helped you I'd like to know if you've got some success out of it. It is a diff This is one of a difficult bike to do, I must admit. Inline fours are a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, it's not so bad when you've got GP dead stuff like that, where you've got, or bandits, where you've got the, the engine exposed and you've got your adjustable valve lifters. They're quite easy to do, but on these bikes, everything's crammed and tucked in, so it does, it does take a little pa bit of patience, okay? But you, you don't have to do it every day, probably once every two, three, four years, depending on how you ride. All right, but you get your valve shims right, you ride your bike nice, it'll last you probably 10 years before you have to do them again if you ride it good, okay? But this has done 20,000 miles, 20,000 miles on this one, and those valve clearances, they're not even out of spec when I took it apart, they're just borderline there, so you can see, you know, it's not had a hard life, even though this is a bit of a, a rough condition, in my opinion, it's not really had a hard life at all, so um, with those valves all, all measuring evenly, but I've seen a lot worse, I've seen a lot worse, I have. But anyway, yeah, that's me out, that's me done. Get a seat on, fairings on this, have a tidy up, and then I might start work on one of the others, okay? Right.
have fun, stay tuned, stay safe, ride safe, and Happy New Year. See you later.